Hi guys, today we are going to discuss a new topic that is human digestive system. So as we all know human digestive system is equally important as the all other systems that you have in your body like your respiratory system, your uh, circulatory system, your nervous system. Digestive system is something interesting and important. Yes, all of us know that we need to eat food to get energy. When we were kids or when we were growing up, your parents would have told you, you should eat well, then only you will be energetic, then only you will grow. Yes, this is true. So what is this process called digestion? Digestion is actually the process of breakdown of the complex food substances that we take in into simpler substances so that it can get into the bloodstream and that's how we get energy for the cell growth or the tissue repair all these purposes. So that is simply what is digestion. Now for this process of digestion to take place we need a system called as the digestive system. What are the parts involved in the digestive system? As you see in the picture here we are having the digestive system which is called as the alimentary canal so as you see here it starts from the mouth and ends till the anus. So the parts the different parts of the digestive system includes the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine and the large intestine and finally we have the anal part or the anus. So this is the part of alimentary canal. Now let's go into the details of each part. So the first part which is the oral cavity or the mouth. We all know that we take in food through our mouth. So when you take in your food it needs to be broken down into smaller particles. You cannot swallow it otherwise. So when you are eating a bread, suppose you are eating a bread. What happens immediately when you put the bread into your mouth, you start chewing it with the help of your teeth and you start mixing your food with the help of your muscular organ which is the tongue and is it only enough that the, the teeth and the tongue will do the process alone? No, there is a fluid which is secreted from, from the salivary glands. Yes, salivary glands produce a fluid which is rich in enzymes and that have uh, a particular process in your mouth to be done in the case of digestion. There is an enzyme called as salivary amylase which is there in the saliva and this salivary amylase has the property of breaking down starch into sugar. So it is in the mouth that the actual digestion starts. The, st the digestion of starch starts in the mouth. Now this starch is broken down into sugar and after that the food is converted into a semi-solid uh, material which is called as bolus. Now this semi-solid material called bolus is now pushed into the esophagus as you see here from the mouth the food is passed through the esophagus. Now the esophagus is just a tubular structure. So this esophagus otherwise known as the foot pipe it has the muscular movement which allows the semi-solid material to move down to the stomach. This movement is what is called as the peristaltic movement. I repeat peristaltic movement. So now the bolus or the semi-solid foot has reached the part called stomach. So here you see the stomach. Now it is the second place where the digestion starts or the digestion of proteins start. Now stomach has a lining wall and it also have the glands, the gastric glands which secrete some enzymes as well as an acid. Do you know which is the acid produced in your stomach? Yes, it is hydrochloric acid. So this particular acid also have a role. What should be the role? Yes, it takes up the role of breaking down the larger molecules into smaller or simpler molecules. So it is in the stomach that the digestion of proteins and other higher substances happen. It's not only the hydrochloric acid which is produced in the stomach. There is also another enzyme that is a protein digesting enzyme which is produced in the stomach that is called as pepsin. 
So this pepsin enzyme is responsible for the protein digestion that takes place in the stomach. And there is a mucal layer, a layer, a thin layer which is covered by mucus, which is actually meant to protect the inner lining of the stomach from the hydrochloric acid. Why is the hydrochloric acid present in the stomach? Now, as I told you earlier, there is an enzyme pepsin, which is uh, which needs the activity of hydrochloric acid to act upon the proteins. So that's the role of hydrochloric acid. Now, what? Why is the mucal layer present there? Now, when we are not eating food in the right time, or when we are starving, you feel a sensation of acidity in your stomach. That's because this hydrochloric acid is, is craving for its food. Now what happens if there is no food? It will start attacking the lining of the wall, the stomach wall. And if this goes on for several days or if this is repeated many times, your stomach will develop ulcer. And that is why seniors or elders, you would have heard them saying, I have severe acidity, I have got ulcer. Yes, these things happen because of the hydrochloric acid which is present in your stomach. Fine. Now, once the food is digested in the stomach, it moves into the small intestine. So, you could see here from the stomach, it is now moving into the small intestine. So, if you could see, I would show you the picture completely. So, here you can see from the stomach, it's entering the small intestine. Have you seen the small intestine? Why is it so much coiled inside? Now, in the alimentary canal, the small intestine is the longest part. It is a long tubular structure and in order to fit it into this smaller area, it is coiled into uh, the thin folds or it is in the coil structure. So, in the small intestine, small intestine is an important part in the digestive system because it is the site of complete digestion. So, that is the site of complete digestion. What does it mean? Now, we told the digestion starts in the mouth where starch is converted to sugar and the protein digestion happens in the stomach. Now, the final digestion that is all these uh, particles which are not digested in the mouth and the stomach and the fat, carbohydrate, all these come down. The fat, especially the fats, they are all digested in the small intestine. Now for this, we have two glands or uh, two secretions coming from the liver and the pancreas. So what you see here is the liver, the largest gland of the human body and down there you can see pancreas also. So these have secretions that are deposited into the small intestine which also helps in the digestion. So again here you could see from the pancreas, the pancreatic juice is being discharged into the small intestine. Now this pancreatic juice contains trypsin and lipase, two enzymes. Trypsin is meant for the complete protein digestion and lipase is meant for the fat digestion. From the liver, the bile juice is secreted into the small intestine and this bile juice creates the alkaline medium for these uh, trypsin and the other enzymes to work out in the small intestine. So that's why we say the complete digestion happens in the small intestine. So when the complete digestion is over, what is the end product? What is the result? Now after the process of digestion is completely over, we have the proteins being converted to amino acids, the carbohydrates converted to glucose and the fatty acids converted to the glycerol. So this is, these three are the end products of digestion. Now where does these digested food go or how is this absorbed into the body? Yes, the small intestine acts as the site of absorption too. So the small intestine, the internal structure of the small intestine have got small finger like projections called as villi. And it is the function of these villi to absorb these molecules and pass them on to the bloodstream so that it reaches the different cells of the body and that's how we get energy. And now what about the waste? The waste after the complete digestion will move on to the large intestine. So now here you can see 
from the small intestine the waste particles which is undigested the undigested particles will move from the small intestine to the large intestine it will go along the large intestine and finally will come and come deposit in the rectum region and there is a sphincter muscle which is there in the rectum and anal opening which controls the motion now this is what is eliminated from the body as the fecal matter or the excreta so this is the whole process of digestion that happens in your body now again let's recall the parts of the digestive system so we started with the mouth the mouth is the starting of the alimentary canal and it goes on to the esophagus or the food pipe from the food pipe it enters the stomach from the stomach it goes into the small intestine and from the small intestine the unabsorbed or the waste food products are moving into the large intestine which moves around and comes down to the anus and it is released as the fecal matter so this is the digestive system in a short view thank you